Welcome. So here I have sine of x equals plus or minus 1 half. And what I want to do is show you how to find all of the solutions for sine of sine equals plus or minus 1 half and be able to understand how we're going to represent all of the solutions, not just the solutions that are on the interval of 0 and 2 pi. But the first thing we always like to do is find the solutions on 0 to 2 pi. And to use that, we use the unit circle. So when I go ahead over here and I create the unit circle, and let me just kind of use um, a different marker. And let's, you know, let, we have an equation we solved, and here's what we get. Well, we got to look at where's plus or minus uh, 1 half. And that occurs at a couple of angles here. The first angle is right here, which we call as pi over 6. Then we have an angle here, which is now going to occur at um, negative pi over 6. Then we have an angle here, which is not negative pi over 6. That's going to be at 5 pi over 6. Then this angle is at 7 pi over 6. And then finally, we have our last angle right here, which is going to occur at um, 11 pi over 6. Now let's go and take a look at you know, each one of these points. If you notice that this point is square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. This one is square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. Here, this one's negative square root of 3 um, divided by 2 comma 1 half. This one's negative square root of 3 divided by 2 comma negative 1 half. So here's all of your solutions that when I, the sine of my angle is going to equal plus or minus uh, 1 half. So a lot of times what we could write, you know, you could just say x equals pi over 6, x equals 5 pi over 6, x equals 7 pi over 6, and x equals 11 pi over 6. So if I asked you to find all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, you could say, oh, well, there's your four solutions. But what if I said find all of the solutions for sine of x equals plus or minus 1 half? Well, to do that, we're going to want to graph what the sine function is going to look like. So remember, the sine function has an amplitude of 1. So it's going to go up to 1 and down to negative 1, 2, 3, 4. It creates one period at 2 pi. So therefore, the graph goes up, crosses, goes down, hits negative 1, comes back up. All right? So that's your interval, what we call our initial period. And that distance is going to be at 2 pi. And what we notice is we want to find when are we going to have solutions at plus or minus 1 half. Well, 1 half is right here and right here. And what we notice that occurs at a couple points. At this point, which ends up being pi over 6. At this point, which ends up being 5 pi over 6 at negative 1 half, which here, which is at 7 pi over 6, and then over here, which is at 11 pi over 6. So you can see how this is represented on our graph on the, when we graph it from the unit circle on our x and y axis. But remember, the sine graph continues forever in the positive and negative direction outside of a constraint of just our initial period or one revolution of 2 pi. So this graph continues on and on and on in the positive and in the negative direction. So how can we represent all of the solutions? Well, what I notice is my solution at 1 half is going to occur again here and here and here and here. Um, and then also, you can say that it's going to occur, um, when you look at it, you can also say that uh, it occurs here, 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 and here, and here, and here. So we have all these different solutions that we're looking at. And what I want you to understand is, rather than having to write down all of these different solutions, we notice that there's a common difference that I can add to each one of these solutions. So if I have pi over 6, what I want you to understand is, rather than saying, well, to go to pi over 6, here's this solution. To get to the next solution that's similar to it, I have to go over here, which is, again, a distance of 2 pi. Then I can go, I'm sorry, not to there to here, which will be distance 2 pi, and then here to here, which is also distance 2 pi. So as long as I keep on adding 2 pi, I'm going to keep on getting all of my solutions to my problem. And I can keep on doing that for the negative value as well. Just keep on adding 2 pi to each one of these angles, and I'm going to get all the solutions in the positive and negative realm. But what I notice when I look at the unit circle is, if I don't need to add 2 pi to get to my solutions, if I simply just add pi, I have this positive solution. By adding pi, I now get to a negative solution. And if I add pi again, I'm going to go back to a, a revolution here to get another solution for pi over 6. So I don't need to add 2 pi to every single one of these solutions. If I just take pi over 6 and I add pi, 
that takes me to the solution of 7 pi over 6. So therefore, it's going to be redundant for me to do the same thing for 7 pi over 6. So I'm just going to simply erase the answer 7 pi over 6 because I know as long as I add pi to a pi over 6, no matter how many times I add pi, I'm always going to get all of the solutions for pi over 6 as well as 7 pi over 6. So I can keep on adding pi as many times as I want to, so I'm going to put that variable as n. And the same thing happens with 5 pi over 6. When I get my angle 5 pi over 6, I can add 2 pi to get to it, and I could also add 2 pi to 11 pi over 6. But if I just add pi to 5 pi over 6, I get now my solution also for 11 pi over 6. By adding pi again, I come back to 5 pi over 6. So therefore, for 5 pi over 6, I'm just going to add pi n to it, and now I can eliminate the 11 pi over 6 because it's just going to be a redundant solution. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you add pi n to finding all of your solutions. Thanks.